You are watching Faith Now with pastor, Bible teacher, and author John W. Smith, Jr. Join us for the next 30 minutes in the study of God's Word and build your faith to become the person you dream to be. Faith Now. Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the program today. It's a joy to be with you on this broadcast. I'm John W. Smith, Jr. Today, we're going to close out our final installment on the series entitled, putting God into remembrance. This has to do with understanding how to connect in covenant with God. First and foremost, we know that without faith, it's impossible to please Him. And those that come to Him must know that He is and that He's a rewarder of them who diligently seek Him. And so it takes faith to do that because faith opens the door of access for you to go into the throne room of God by grace. And so... We look at how to take the promises of God's Word, which includes uh, kingdom health, kingdom wealth, kingdom peace, protection, success, and victory. Everything that you would expect that happens in heaven should be happening in your life here on the earth. Now, it may not feel that way. It may not look that way. Maybe it's not the case, but it doesn't mean that it can't change. And so we believe today that it can and that it will. And when you use your faith, which is God's gift in you, which gives you the ability to believe what He has said, then you will see it conceived in your life. In Isaiah 43, verse 25, it says, I, even I, am He that blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember your sins. Verse 26 says, Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together, declare you that you may be justified. And we've qualified that that phrase actually means to mark the moment by inscribing with words. So you know, a lot of times you ask people, say, well, do you believe in God? And they'll say yes, but they've never made the confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead on the third day. But it's necessary if you're going to become born again. In order, in, in, in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must make that verbal confession. You must say something that will document your faith so that it enters into the covenant agreement with God. And we note that it also means, as he said, let us plead together, that it positions or aligns you with God so that you're standing on the same platform that he's on. In other words, what God has said about your health, what God has said about your wealth, uh, what God has said about recovering from unhealthy, unwealthy circumstances and situations, that's the promises of God that are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. When you align and position yourself with God, it's because you speak and say what God's Word has to say. And you can't just say it from your mouth. You've got to speak it from your heart. Amen? So we determined also in the New Testament that it's impossible for God to forget. Because Hebrews 6 verse 10 says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you've shown toward His name, in that you've ministered to the saints and do minister, which we establish means this, that in order for God to forget, He would have to be unrighteous. Well, God's not unrighteous, so it's impossible for Him to forget. And He's not forgotten you. Uh, all through Scripture, we see places where God remembered. In, in fact, like in Genesis 8, verse 1, it says, God remembered Noah and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. In Genesis 19, verse 29, it says, It came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham. In Genesis 30, verse 22, it says, God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her and opened her womb. Boy, we could, <laughs> we could just talk about that right there. You know, you may not need a physical womb opened up, but you need to understand something about the word womb. In the New Testament, uh, we are told that we have a spirit that is born again by the Holy Spirit when we do believe Jesus to be the Son of God and that God raised Him from the dead on the third day. When we believe it with our heart, for the man believes with their heart unto righteousness and with their mouth confession is made unto salvation. So when you speak the word of what you believe in your heart, it causes you to be saved. You get a new, brand new born again spirit because it was dead before that. Now old things pass away, all things become new. And as you study the New Testament, you realize that the word spirit, which in the Greek is translated to, to mean spirit, 
uh, which is who you are. And it also means heart. You know, so if you see uh, the word heart used, uh, you can apply it as well synonymously. But it also means abdomen and cavity, or it could say like a womb, a place where you bear things and are fruitful. Because it's in your spirit that you become fruitful and multiply in your life. So God remembered Rachel, and this was for a natural child. And certainly God hadn't forgotten you. And so there's something that can be born from your life today too. And it's the seed of the Word of God that the Holy Spirit will overshadow and bring increase and cause that fruitfulness to come out of your life. Uh, in Joseph's uh, life, in Genesis 42, verse 9, we see that Joseph remembered his dreams. And these are dreams that he had 20 years previously when his brothers came into Egypt as he was sitting on the throne of the second position uh, like a vice president in Egypt uh, under the command of the Pharaoh. And the Bible says he remembered the dreams he dreamed of them. And so you may have forgotten some things in the past, but God hasn't. And what God will do is he will bring people back into your life. And in that moment of time when you see them, it's going to jog your memory, so to speak. It's going to bring you into remembrance, into something that God has promised you. Exodus 2.24 says, God heard the groaning of Israel, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, he's the God of the living, not the dead, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we are blessed with faithful Abraham, so he's remembered us too. If he's remembered Abraham, he's remembered you. And notice here it says he remembered the covenant that he made with them. Well, certainly, if he remembers the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he remembers the covenant that he made through Jesus Christ to bring you into the kingdom of God. Amen? You're not forgotten. You may feel like it. You know, everybody goes through those times in their life where it just seems like life passed you by. But you've got to keep trying. You've got to keep moving. You've got to keep living the life that Jesus came to give you, life to the overflowing abundance. God promised Israel. He said... Uh, and let's look at this Numbers chapter 10, verse 9 says, If you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. So I believe when we shout and praise and confess and rejoice in the word, that it releases the sound of the blast of a trumpet from our life. And it says when, look at this, it says when you go to war in your land against the enemy that's oppressing you. So maybe that land represents your business or your marriage or your ministry. When the enemy's trying to oppress you, sound the alarm, amen? Blow the trumpet in Zion, the Bible says. So when you blow and blast that trumpet of praise and worship and, and rejoice and confess the word, the Bible says God remembered them before. And he'll do the same thing for you. Amen. God is not unrighteous to forget the promises that he's made for your life. Through the power of faith, every believer has been given access to God. Whenever you approach God, you must do so on the basis of His Word. In the series, Putting God into Remembrance, you will learn how to confess the Word of God in your prayer and petition to God that will open the floodgates of promises from the covenant of God's Word in your life. For your love gift of $25, Pastor John will send you this brand new CD series. Send your gift to Faith Now, P.O. Box 2605, Clarksville, Indiana, 47131, or order online now at johnwsmithjr.com. There's so many places throughout Scripture where we see that God remembers. So, you know, truly, I want to encourage you today that God has not forgotten where you are, most importantly, who you are. And I know that many of you today that are Christians that are watching this program and are born again, you've gone through seasons of your life where it just felt like nothing was happening. And certainly there are examples of that in Scripture as well. But God does hear. And one of the things that activates God's hearing is a cry. He never answers the crisis. If, if he did, he would just fix everything arbitrarily. But when we cry unto him in faith, it invites him to come in. And I like how the scripture says, it says that uh, your enemies become my enemies. So remember that when you are in a battle, that you're not alone. And when you are facing the enemy in your own land that's oppressing you, you have a right to drive them out. 
And I believe there are many ways that we can uh, accomplish that through confession of the word, through praise and worship, even through our giving. But let me encourage you today to open up your mouth and say what the word of God says. And when you do, it will draw God into your life because he will remember his covenant. It's not that he forgot it. We've made this clear. God is not unrighteous to forget. So what he said in Isaiah, he said to you as well, to plead with him, to state your case is another way of saying that, bring me into remembrance, put me there. Because God didn't forget, it's just that we have to position him uh, where we stand with him when we confess what he does say. So we're not telling God what to do, we're just confessing what God has already done. You know, there's a scripture uh, in Numbers chapter 15, verses 39 and 40, it talks about the fringes of the high priest's robe. And it says in verse 39, It shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you used to go a whoring. Verse 40 says, That you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. So if you've seen the, the tassels or the fringes of the, uh, the priest's robe, as uh, even in the book of Leviticus are described for the high priest, that one of the purposes of those was to uh, cause the people of God to remember the word of God and not only remember it, but do it. So see, remembering is not just recalling, it's activating. And so there's an example there where God wants you to remember the word, but when you do, he wants you to, to walk in it and act upon it. And I want to show you this real quick. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 26, and Jesus is speaking of the Holy Spirit here. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So this is interesting because in Isaiah, we put God in remembrance by speaking the word. And in the Gospel of John, Jesus said one of the purposes of the Holy Spirit, and there are many, would be that He would bring all the word that Jesus spoke into our remembrance so that we could come into covenant with the Lord in the new covenant. Bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I've said to you. So one of the things you've got a uh, purpose to do in your life is to become a student of the, of the word of God so that... When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you know what He's talking about. If you don't read the Word, and if you don't remember the Word, you won't do the Word. And remember, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, but not to be a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the Word. Amen? And so coming into remembrance activates the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can do the Word as Jesus spoke. So everything God said from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 can activate as a promise in our life when we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. It'll bring us into remembrance with Him and we will do what God's Word says do and it will please Him. Through the power of faith, every believer has been given access to God. Whenever you approach God, you must do so on the basis of His Word. In the series, Putting God into Remembrance, you will learn how to confess the Word of God in your prayer and petition to God that will open the floodgates of promises from the covenant of God's Word in your life. For your love gift of $25, Pastor John will send you this brand new CD series. Send your gift to Faith Now, P.O. Box 2605, Clarksville, Indiana, 47131. Or order online now at John W. Smith Jr. Com. Putting God in remembrance, again, is a product of seeing what the Word of God says and then saying what the Word of God says. And when you do that, the Holy Spirit will come to you, bring all things into your remembrance that Jesus spoke. So be a student of the Word so that when He tells you these things, you understand what He's saying. Then you can act on it because you understand that it is the Word of God. And your faith is developed in it because of hearing it over and over again. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, we see the story of the fig tree. And many of you know this story, and I've heard it taught and preached a hundred different ways, and I love every one of them. I'm telling you, there's all kind of stuff that you can glean out of this story, and others just like it. But in Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, we read in verse uh, 21, 
It says that Peter called into remembrance and said unto Jesus, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. And then Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. Then it says in verse 23, For verily or truly I say to you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in their heart, but shall believe that those things which they say shall come to pass, they'll have whatsoever they say. Therefore I say to you, what things soever, and listen to this, you desire, it doesn't say need, it says desire. When you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. And I mention that because I do believe that our time spent in prayer should first and foremost be spent praising and worshiping God and acknowledging His Word. And, but I also believe that we should not uh, waste time uh, telling God all of our needs when Jesus made it clear in Matthew chapter 6 that the Heavenly Father knows you have need of all these things. He said, don't seek after these things, for the Gentiles seek after such things. And the word seek means worship. So you say, what do I do? Well, it's very simple. If the Heavenly Father knows you have need of food and clothing and shelter and necessities, then instead of begging Him for something He already knows about, instead of asking Him for something He's already met, thank Him for it in advance. You say, well, I don't have food, or I don't have uh, the money I need to pay the bills, or whatever. But you can use your faith and go ahead and be grateful and thankful. And I'm telling you, it moves the heart of God. See, that's humility is what that is. And the Bible says to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. And so when you are willing to thank God for something you're not even holding in your hands, maybe it's a child or a business or a vision, a ministry or a dream, but you believe by faith that God hears you because you know that when you go to Him, He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him, then you have a right to go ahead and thank God in advance. Every day I thank God, thank you for meeting my needs. Thank you for taking care of my family. You know, and there are times where we have needs in specific areas. And I've learned how to sow a seed in gratitude as well as a testimony of my faith. And that's what that's about. And it acts as a memorial in heaven before God. And we'll hit that here in just a moment and talk about it. But I have learned through the years that God honors that. And it's something that you can do too. And you have to practice anything you do well. And so I've learned how to practice walking in love. I've learned how to practice forgiving. Start with myself. If I can learn to love myself and forgive myself the way God did, then I can exchange it with other people and see what God's done for them as well because I appreciate what He's done for me. A lot of people struggle with that. Keeps them in their past and in their pain, but God wants you released from that. But you know, I've learned how to tell God uh, how much I appreciate Him, how much I appreciate what He has already done, and I believe this, if God's got us scheduled to take us into eternity, He can take us through all of our expenses in this life as well. So I don't beg God. Uh, in fact, David said this best in the book of Psalms, in chapter 37, he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. So you don't have to beg and plead with God. You know, a lot of people pray, say, oh God, please do this, please do that. God wants to do these things for him. In fact, is He's already established them as a promise to you. So when you use your faith and you speak the Word of God, you're positioning yourself and you're marking the moment and the territory by inscribing with words, bringing the covenant to pass by bringing God into remembrance to what He's already said about your life. This is going to absolutely radically change many of you that are listening today. I get emails all the time. People List of prayer requests. We pray for those people. We pray for their needs as well. We agree for miracles, signs, and wonders to follow and confirm and approve the word. Because really, miracles only happen, not because you need them, but because you want them, but also because the word of God has been established. And you read that in Mark 16, how that uh, God worked with the disciples everywhere with uh, signs, wonders, and miracles, confirming the word. So, when the word is taught or preached, then God can confirm that word because what's happening is you're speaking and declaring, like in Isaiah, declare you that you may be justified. And it puts the word as the platform for God, who is the word of God, to come into the matter and situation and change that thing miraculously. 
Listen, I've had so many times in my life where, you know, it was just a miracle from God that we came through physically. I've had more than one physical miracle in my life, including uh, multiple sclerosis, which I have shared many times as a testimony. It's in my book, Thousandfold Principle, and I've shared it uh, around the world, even from the city of Jerusalem, live on television. And uh, God delivered me miraculously, but I was praising, worshiping, speaking the word, confessing that by the stripes Jesus took upon his back, I was healed, was healed. Not going to be, I was healed. It's already an established fact, so my faith brings me up to speed. Another way of saying that. My wife and I, and I'm telling you, God is my witness on this. I was sitting there thinking about it when we were recording this program, that God canceled a $1 million debt that we owed. I mean, it was contractually due. But God's favor and grace intervened and stopped that from entering into our life. You know, that thing entered into our land to oppress us. But we remembered what the word of the Lord said. And then we sowed a seed. We sowed a significant seed, as a matter of fact. And we sowed that seed and we placed it before the Lord as a testimony of what we believed and we knew it was a memorial before God. And we got the miracle we believed for. We didn't buy it. You can't buy the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't buy a miracle. So don't even think that's what I'm saying. But for instance, in Acts chapter 10, there's a man named Cornelius. Cornelius is a uh, man who is religious and he gives alms to the people. And, and he's a good man. But the Bible declares he is praying one day and the angel of the Lord comes to him and says, your alms, which is the giving, and your prayers have come up before the throne as a memorial before God. So a memorial, in other words, bringing into remembrance, it wasn't just his words, it was his seed. So when he put his seed and his words together, which I always tell people, and I've always lived this way in my life as a believer, and will always continue to do so, believe that when you give to God, that you should always have a good confession over that gift. Many people don't do that. They just give, they put it in the, the plate or the bucket or at the altar. But you should speak over that seed, just like Deuteronomy 26 says. But you know what happened? Cornelius was seeking God, and he had given into the kingdom. And his prayers, which had to be by faith, and his giving mixed together before the throne as a memorial brought God into remembrance. And I know that miraculously God's done this for me many times as well. Like I said, physically, financially, emotionally. And I know God will do the same thing for you. See, when you give to God, it becomes a testimony on the planet Earth to mankind that God multiplies that seed, increases the fruits of your righteousness, and that He honors that which you have placed upon an altar. An altar purpose of an altar is to draw you near God and God won't come to an empty altar so I've learned how to sow the seed and to trust God and just like Cornelius who by the way Cornelius was the man that God used to open the door of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentile nations through the interaction with Peter you see the whole story in the book of Acts but it was a product of his prayers, which I'm sure had to be the word of God spoken. Because, look, when you go to, to the Lord, you go to him with the word. Jesus is the high priest and apostle of your confession, so you have to give him something to work with. So when you make that confession, then God can come and he can release that promise into your life because it brings God into remembrance into your situation. Now, some of you facing some financial dilemmas. Monumental, and I'm telling you, a million dollar debt was monumental for us. But God honored our faith, our prayers, our thanksgiving seed, which is really what that is. And he came into the situation, and I'm telling you, he worked that out to the place where my uh, legal counsel couldn't even hardly believe it. They said, in 24 years, we have never, ever seen what just took place for you. And know the funny thing about that? Before that happened, I went to my attorney and described to him what was going to happen. So he'd know it wasn't his legal prowess, but it was going to be the power of the Holy Spirit and the word of the living God who was going to take care 
of me and my wife and my family. And God did exactly what I believe by faith he would do according to his word. And God will do the same thing for you in Jesus' name. You know, God's not unrighteous to forget, and he hasn't forgotten you. If God forgot, that would make him unrighteous, and we know the Bible says that he is not. And I want to encourage you today as you're hearing this message that uh, this is the moment in time that you need to approach God in faith as your faith is built up hearing this word to go to God, just like Hebrews 11 verse 6 says. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please him, but you must go to him and know that he is, number one. And if you know God exists, then you can go to Him and expect a reward for your faith when you approach Him. So right now where you are, your living room, your dining room, your car, wherever you're watching this, I'm encouraging you today to just go to the Lord and just pray this prayer with me. And I'm going to pray a prayer of thanksgiving, number one, for the fact we're forgiven. And number two, to approach God and to ask Him to forgive us of our sins so that we can have a brand new clean slate. Amen? Pray this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank You that You have forgiven me. I approach You now on the basis of Your holiness and Your goodness and mercy. And I ask You, as I confess my sins unto You, to receive my confession and to forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness so that I can have a brand new start with you. I believe this now. I receive it in faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You say, well, that's awful simple. Well, sure it is. God doesn't make things hard. So because of the love of God that he has for you, and the Bible says the great love wherewith he has loved you. In fact, he called it an everlasting love, an eternal love. You can't prevent the fact God loves you, and he is just uh, eager to get reconnected with you. So I want to encourage you right now, if you prayed that prayer with me, uh, to call or write me or email me and let me know so that we can rejoice with you. Before I go and encourage you, you can get this entire series on putting God into remembrance in our product store at johnwsmithjr.com or you can write the information on the screen as well and you can get a copy on CD of all of these messages that will build your faith. Well, God bless you. Thanks for being a part of this ministry with me. Partners and friends, your gifts are going a long way. We are reaching more and more people every week. God bless you. I'm praying for you, and we'll see you next time. You have been watching Faith Now with pastor, teacher, and author John W. Smith, Jr. To learn more, go to johnwsmithjr.com or write Faith Now, P.O. Box 2605, Clarksville, Indiana, 47131, USA. Thank you for your support. When you're in the Louisville, Kentucky, or Southern Indiana area, be sure to visit us in worship on Sunday mornings at 1030 a.m. Eastern Time at Celebration Harvest Church, which is located at 515 Potter's Lane in Clarksville, Indiana. Thanks for watching, and join us again next time for Faith Now with Pastor John W. Smith, Jr.